Welcome to the fifth episode of the Thoughts with Lachman podcast. My name is Lachman Sybil, and I'm a sophomore in the Edgemont Junior Senior High School. In the past few episodes, I've discussed the influence of German immigrants on kindergarten and the impact of World War I and World War II on German as a foreign language in American public schools. I've also discussed East German nostalgia after the Berlin Wall was taken down and the role of soccer in German culture. If any of those topics interest you, I highly recommend you listen to the first few episodes of the podcast. I always mention this at the start of all my podcasts, but in case you're a, uh, you are a new listener, I'll mention it again. You don't need to follow along in order in the series. Um, so if you didn't watch episode one and you want to watch episode two, you're not going to miss out on any information because it's not like a sequence and you have to follow it along. You can Everything I talk about in this podcast will relate to this topic and each podcast is on a different topic. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I would encourage you to jump around and just watch the things that interest you. So in this episode of the podcast, I'm going to be discussing Karl Marx. Um, he's a famous German philosopher, economist and a political theorist. And, uh, I'll be talking about his beliefs and ideas as well as his influence in history with like the Russian revolution and the present with American politics. So just a bit of background on Karl Marx. He's famous um, for his political theories and uh, for being a, a well renowned, a world renowned socialist. Marx was more than that though. I, I, he was also a, uh, a philosopher, a economist, a and a uh, journalist. So um, yeah, so Marx critical theories about economics, society, and politics. Those were collect- collectively understood as Marxism, and that's a famous that's a term in history now. And that basically means that human societies develop through class conflict. And Marx argued that in capitalism, which is currently the economic system in the United States today, and most major countries, most of the strongest economic countries in the world. So Marx argued that in capitalism, the conflict between the ruling classes that control the means of production and the workers would produce internal tensions that would lead to self that would lead to self-destruction and uh and yeah and marx really believed that because of this principle society would replace capitalism with socialism and he believed in socialism because for marx class antagonisms and uh under capitalism and they owed in part to like the instability and the crisis prone nature of capitalism. And he believed that they would eventuate the working class's development or of class consciousness. And Marx actively pressed for the implementation of socialism. He argued that the working class should carry out organized revolutionary action to topple capitalism and bring out socioeconomic emancipation for freedom. And, uh, Marx has been described by many as one of the most influential figures in human history and his work has been both lauded and criticized. It's his work is very controversial, especially his economic work. That's really what's controversial. Everything else is really based up in his career, like his journal, his journalism with his newspapers, his political theories, they're all based off of his economic theories. And his economics laid the basis for, for um, much of the current understanding of labor and its relation to capital. And uh, Marx's work has had a major influence on many intellectuals, labor unions, artists, and political parties worldwide. 
and they've either modified or adapted or completely ignored his ideas. Um, and Marx also had a tremendous, uh, tremendously important influence on uh, the Russian Revolution. So Marx is typically cited as one of the principal architects of modern social, social science. So let's just go a bit of background on Marx, and I'm going to talk about his life and then after I talk about his life, his early life, what he did for a living for much of his life, I'll then talk about why that's important, how it shaped him to be who he is, who he's known for. And then we'll focus more on, we'll do a deep dive into his theories and uh, we'll also discuss his influences. So Marx was born in 1818, one of third of nine children and, uh, um, his family actually did not grow up that poor. They were, they were middle-class people. Now, Marx's school, an interesting thing I read about, um, with Marx's school, um, the local, the, uh, the school employed many liberal humanists as teachers and the local government was conservative. So when Marx was 14, the police raided the school and discovered that the literature espousing political liberalism was being distributed amongst the students. And they considered the distribution of such material a seditious act. And the uh, authorities instituted reforms and they replaced several staff during um, staff in the school during Marx's attendance. I thought that was a pretty cool part of Marx's life because first off, how um, how big of an influence did those liberal humanists as teachers have on Marx for much of his childhood, right? His early years. That's an important question. And then the second question is that Marx really, he wanted to stand up for the people who weren't being stood up for, right? Marx is known to be super pro worker. And he really wanted to stand up for the workers because they're sacrificing their labor they're not getting paid that well. Well, you have these owners who are making tons of money. So Marx really wanted to stand up for the for the people not being stood up for. So I think this example of how, you know, you have the liberal humanists who, I mean, Marx was a good student when he was younger. So probably, I, I don't know this for a fact, but let's just assume for purpose of this, my theory on this, or not my theory, but like, a possible question that's interesting so if marx got along well with those teachers he did well right and let's just assume that he admired those theory those teachers because they were liberal humanists right then it kind of shows the local conservative government shutting them down raiding the school that kind of shows right that the other side's trying to suppress in a way and Marx is young when he's seeing this. So not only has Marx been influenced in his own ideology by these teachers, but he's also seen them being suppressed by the local conservative government. So that's important to keep note for Marx because Marx is a revolutionary. So, and uh, yeah, so I think that's an interesting note. So I really wanted to include it in the podcast because I thought I was reading on Marx and I thought this was interesting. Uh, Marx went to uh, the University of Bonn and he wanted to study philosophy and literature, but his father wanted him to study law. Marx, at the University of Bonn, he uh, joined the Poets Club, and it was a group containing political radicals, and they were monitored by the police. And uh, although Marx did study law, he was fascinated by philosophy, and he wanted to kind of almost connect the two, combine the two, and he believed that and this is actually a famous um, Marx quote, that without philosophy, nothing could be accomplished. So Marx finished school, and Marx was a journalist for um, much of his post-college life. And in 1843, he became the co-editor of a new radical leftist newspaper. And Marx, had, Marx lived in a lot of different countries. He lived in France um, in his late 20s, early 30s. 
You also lived in England, and you also spent a few years in Belgium. So he was a well-traveled per. Well, well uh, he had seen many different countries, and it, it contributed to his knowledge because he wanted to see how he wanted to make sure that what he had observed was consistent in many different European countries. And uh, so let's just focus on Paris for right now. So Marx um, in Paris, he engaged in a in, in an intensive study, really, of political economy. And uh, he joined up with a few French socialists. And he really started in Paris, France, around 1843 to 1845. This is the time. Marx is about... Um, He's the late twenties at this point, and uh, this is really when he started to study political economy, and this is what Marx would pursue for the rest of his life. Um, now Marx was constantly being pulled away from study of political economy, and not by the usual daily demands of the time, but okay, but additionally by editing a radical newspaper, and he also lit, uh, organized and directed the efforts of a uh, political party during um, years of potentially revolutionary popular uprising uprisings of the uh, citizens. Now, Marx was still drawn back to his economic studies, and he sought to understand the inner workings of capitalism. Marx also, um, so he was actually uh, kicked out of, he was expelled from France because which is interesting, but in 1845, he uh, received a request from the Prussian king, and uh, the French government shut down. And the French government and a minister, I believe it, his name's Francis Guizot, and he expelled Marx from France. So Marx now moved from France to Brussels and Belgium, and he continued to study capitalism and political economy. Um, in Brussels, Marx met many other exiled, keyword exiled, right? They've been kicked out, suppression again, socialists from across Europe. And Moses Hess, Karl Heinzen, Joseph Widmer. And Marx also wrote, and this is a pretty famous book, German Ideology, The German Ideology. That's a famous Marx book. And it's Best known for Marx's development of the concept of historical materialism. And so just a bit about German ideology before we discuss um, historical materialism, but it's, it's a humorous satire. And um, because what Marx was trying to do, he wanted to get his point across but he did not want to get his book banned because there was a lot of suppression at the time. Like I said, I mentioned it twice already, but by making it a humorous satire, Marx is really trying to get away with, with, you know, putting his point out there, but not getting um, his book banned. He, He didn't want it to get banned. I mean, a few other, the socialists that he met, um, they had been banned. So, that's interesting. But back to the book, right? The the main concept is, is to, in the book, why it's so well known is historical materialism. And it's a, it, it focuses on human societies and their development through history. And it argues that history is the result of material conditions rather than ideals. So that's that's why Marx's book, so the German ideology, is so well known. Um, so now, so Marx, he never actually lived to see his book get published. It was published in 1932. It took many years after for his book to become published. And many of Marx's writings, he never got to see in action. He never got to see them being published. They were published many years after he had passed away. Um, so now enough about uh, Marx's life, but let's focus more on his theories. So like I said earlier, earlier Marx believed in the in uh, 
the worker having power instead of the owner. The worker should control the means of production. And Marx be believed in socialism instead of capitalism, and he wanted more equality. And we can see Marx's, you know, Marx's ideas were important at the time, but they've also had a major historical influence. The two examples we're going to be discussing today with the influence of Marx's work. One is uh, the Russian Revolution, and the other is going to be a bit of American politics today. So in the Industrial Revolution, um, Marx saw firsthand the poor conditions and poverty that the working class were suffering through. And many cities were overcrowded, and Marx was influenced by this because he, believed, he saw firsthand and he believed that the working class was being exploited. And Marx believed that, the, that due to the exploitation of, of the working class, he thought that the, the capitalist system would almost be like destroyed because of a violent overthrow from the working class of so the wealthy owners. Because remember, the, the working class made up a, a majority. The, the wealthy owners, who at the time controlled the means of production, they were a minority. So Marx believed that he, he believed that a communist society would have no private business so that no individual wealth existed. And he wanted a classless, a classless society where everything was shared equally. And this is why Marx is considered by many capitalists to be radical, to be in the radical far left. But Marx didn't, Marx thought that in each stage of history, there was a different economic system. And he believed that humanity's eventual realization of a communist society was scientifically in inevitable because of this, because each stage of history had a different economic system. So Marx believed that at the time when Russia was in its capitalist stage, he believed that there would be an, an eventual overthrow of the wealthy after the, uh, the Industrial Revolution, and that would lead to the communist stage. Um, and, you know, we can see, um, you know, Marx's, I, you know, we can see definitely Marx's ideas in the Russian Revolution. And that's why, that's one area where we can see the historical significance of Karl Marx. I mean, we can also see it today, right? When we think of the far left in politics, you know, many people think of figures like Karl Marx. And it's because, of, you know, the far right and the far left, they're considered to be radicals, you know, extremists. And many historians considered his ideas radical. I mean, even when Marx was in college, he was joining groups that were called, the, their names, they called themselves radicals, like the radical poets. Um, so... You can see Marx's ideas today with the far left. Any like people who emphasize, who really who were socialists, I mean, they're often compared to Marx. And one example of that is Bernie Sanders. You now, Bernie Sanders is a senator from Vermont. Um, he was formerly the mayor of Bur Burlington, Vermont, um, and uh, he ran for president twice, both unsuccessful, but both times he generated a solid amount of support. He was pro he was the primary, uh, he was the runner up both times. But Bernie is often called a Marxist. Bernie's called, I mean, he calls himself a socialist, but he's often called a Marxist. And it's because he shares some of Marx's ideas. They're they're both strongly pro worker. You know, the, the Bernie really wants income inequality. Income equality. He he focuses on the issue of income inequality. And uh, he's similar to Marx in that they're both pro worker. They both want more equality. And the problem with 
the, the problem the main problem bernie faced was that socialism in history has been failures the, the, i mean socialist economic policy economic systems have been have failed in history and for that reason when someone's called a socialist it comes across negatively and because of the socialist failures in history so um bernie was attacked you know ferociously from the right even you know even the democrats the moderate democrat the establishment democrats when bernie was leading because bernie was actually winning in the the primary after like the first two or three states but the the establishment democrats were so fearful of bernie becoming the the nominee um because they feared i guess that he would get destroyed by donald trump that they all rallied together they all dropped out of the race other than joe biden and all the others like pete Buttigieg, he's a mayor from uh indiana um amy klobuchar she's a senator from minnesota um you know i mean those are the main oh mike bloomberg um mike bloomberg is a businessman he is worth over 50 billion dollars he ran for president he spent nearly half a billion dollars into his campaign um and you know i mean kamala harris a senator from california lots of paul cory booker a senator from new jersey many politicians rallied behind joe biden and they endorsed joe biden they consolidated behind joe biden because they were fearful of bernie sanders and they believed that joe biden had the best chance of beating bernie sanders so i guess i'm a little off topic but the point is that back to marxism we can see it today with Bernie in American politics like a bit. I don't think Bernie's a full Marxist, but they definitely share some beliefs. And um, the response, even by Democrats to Bernie, um, shows what how you know today many view Karl Marx. You know he's not really celebrated today. When someone calls, you know, in a an economics person, an economics professor, or um, or a politician, a Marxist, you know, that's not a po- that doesn't that's not a positive term. Let's see. So, and I I guess the the main the primary reason and is the primary reason why is uh, the socialist failures throughout history, and that you can look at Mao, you know, um, Mao and China. Mao was a socialist leader, and he felt miserably. You know, China struggled in and under Mao, um, and up until China switched from socialism in the seventeen, I mean, not the seventeen, then like the nineteen seventies, I believe. And it, they didn't. They struggled. China struggled under their socialist system with Mao. And m- many people today point to the failures in socialism and they use that. So that's why um, when someone's called him, that's why Marx, Karl Marx, he, he doesn't come across positively today. And I mean, that's debatable, it's controversial, it's political, but um, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, Marx, dedicated his life for his political theories and uh yeah and he, he dedicated his life for his political theories he fought for what he he valued he wrote what he valued he published many books multiple books and uh he yeah he he, he fought for what he believed in and regardless whether you agree with him or you disagree with him you can applaud that um that brings us to the end of today's podcast um Thank you for listening. And uh, just to recap, we discussed Karl Marx's life, his theories, um, his impact on the Russian Revolution, and with American politics today. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to the podcast, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Goodbye.